Hi, my name is Joachim Gerpitz. I will be here talking to you about the, um, let's say, a talk that I was planning to give the, uh, in the given night for, uh, for a public. However, after several discussion, uh, we decided to change the to change the talk. Nonetheless, you are still invited if you are around, and the, the talk will be will be. I will try to do my best to broadcast it by YouTube, but I mean, the last time I tried to broadcast, I had some problems with the software. But anyway, in the, so here is the version that I was planning to present. However, we, let's say, we, we arrived to the conclusion that the talk was too much complex for the context. And the, but the talk still has its value, so I decided to make this video and also make the documentation of the talk. I was planning to write a paper with the same title and the, uh, let's say that uh, it required a bit of time. That's why I have called it a friendly discussion because that topic is very complicated and the, to write a paper I will need more time to, to gather more reference to make it better. But for now I believe that it's enough for a talk for a discussion. You, as always, you are welcome to send feedback to let me know what you think and to uh, I'm all, always open to discussion. So, I I would like to start with a uh, if, uh, if a joke. I think a joke it's a it's a very nice way to make idea to in order to make idea to stick to make idea to remain on the head. I heard that once uh, from a professor and it's very, very interesting. People in general are going to remember for a talk, something very nice you said or maybe a joke or something very different. So I'd like to, to, to let's say, to make a joke and they ask you to keep that in mind. The idea is a metaphor, so it's a, it's a metaphoric way to see the problem. So the problem is the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics. So the unreasonable, that is, it means there is no, no way to explain. Eff effectiveness means that it's effective. So it's not very easy to explain. You can find a huge amount of videos on YouTube, not say, let's say a relatively huge amount of videos, not too much. And you can find some papers as well, but I believe that that is still not very clear because it was developed in a context which was the, the, the idea was first published in the 16, the 1960 by 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 Eugene Vigne. At the context, he was talking more about physics, and from biology, the idea is a bit more complicated. And um, so that he, I I I I think I. I will discuss with you a little bit this idea and uh, likely I'm going to put this idea on the paper as well. And uh, this concept of theorism effectiveness can be discussed from two point of view. We, uh, we are going to sit more or less. Despite, however, the, the classical discussion of theorism effectiveness just for one point of view in which I'm going to hopefully uh, help you to understand what uh, what I mean. So the let's say the the thought. Let's let let's make a, a thought experiment. Not to explain the idea. Suppose I pick up someone like a phone room randomly. Uh, I make agreement with that person to make a trip all over Europe. We want to visit a lot of countries, and the, this person decided it's a very good idea, it's very excited to go around with a Brazilian. He is very happy, and so on, and so on. It will be very cool. Okay, you decide to go, and the, uh, I, 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 then I show you the car that I'm, I'm planning to travel. I believe that you are going to think twice before you go. The probability that you can go on <laughs> so far away with this car, the probability is very low. So that's a f f thought experiment that can be used to explain and understand. So however I said it was a mistake, my car is this one. In this case you are going to to tell me, oh wow, that, that's cool. We have a very high probability that we are going to achieve our final, our, our final goal and that trip will be very nice. 
So in mathematics, the, the story is a little bit more complicated because we uh, we cannot uh, tell the difference between a good car and a bad car. We have the ways to do that, such as Einstein, like the idea that a mathematical model is supposed to be simple. But in biology, the story is not so much like this. In the majority of the models they are not simple. When, when they are simple, they are, quite to they are called toy models. So a toy model is very simple, but not very effective. So it put us in the trouble that it to judge the effectiveness of a mathematical model. In, in, in the, to talk about the unreasonable effectiveness in biology becomes a bit more complicated. But it's a problem in mathematics in general, such as the, the, the superstring theory, the unified field theory that has been developed from the, the called the dream of Einstein, in which he, uh, Einstein was chasing in the last the three decades of his life what's so called the Messner equation, an equation that could be explained everything. Unfortunately, unfortunately failed, but some new scientists from our time are uh, pursuing this, this goal under the name of the superstring theory, the, the theory of everything. And uh, as, as I saw in a kind of a, a documentary about this, 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 this theory, the uh, very, let's say, renowned scientist was saying that you have no way to know that you are going to succeed. So that, that, that's exactly what happened in mathematics in general, and especially what happened by all. There's no way for us to know that a mathematical model is going to work properly. There is no way to, to, to make the proper judgment. So the best you can do is to find some kind of rule such as the case of the car, we judge the car by the by the uh, by the outside. Maybe this uh, maybe this Ferrari here is not so good compared to this uh, to compared to this one. Maybe this one is car is old, but it's a very strong, it's a very resilient car. We don't know. So uh, the best thing to do in mathematics is do the same way that you did with the car. You judge the car by the output, by the by the outfit, by the outside, by the image that you see. So, in, uh, in mathematics, we have several ways to make mathematical model, and biology is not different. I saw that recently I, was, I have written a paper, can download my, 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 um, from my page on, on ResearchGate, and uh, that was one of the concerns I had, because people use a lot the name white box and black box, but they are not so, let's say, precise about what they're saying. I saw different people talking about black box in different way, so I have decided to develop a method called the color box, which is the color, the blindness of a model. I have called passional in blind model. But the, the uh, so, White box, it's a model that you know everything. So white box is the classical way that Fisk has been working. Fisk is very proud of. So for them, the, the model of the heat capacity developed by Albert Einstein that he later was replaced by the model by the BS model. So that model of Einstein is a white box. Why is it a white box? Because Einstein used first principle. So in his model he, he, he knows what's going on inside the, the, the metal in order to change the heat capacity. So that's called white box. On the other hand, uh, if you have a model that uh, it works it gives result, but you don't know exactly what the mean of that the of the of the of the math the mathematical behind the model. It's called a black box model. But it, the, uh, today you know, they are developing some middle ways that uh, could some be some people call calling gray box, and I'm trying to develop the methodology to to formalize this kind of, of approach. I'm trying to extend that to more general. In general, I saw it in uh, using stochastic differential equation, but I think we can go even more. We can can use quite black box model to get quite white model so that you get a very gray model. So that's that's a methodology I'm working at you you are invited to to you are invited to see that uh, that the, the paper I, that I have I have published in research gate. There is no form publication, just a paper that you can find. So the the point is that uh, the, uh, the, uh, there is a second problematic here that I have not represented here, so I I try to show in a in a scheme. So here you have the con the, con the concept of the, of the bottom up approach and the top down approach. So bottom up approach is 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the more that are bottom up, they are white box, but not every white box are bottom up. So a bottom up approach is a approach that you start from the from the bottom. So let's suppose you have a, a system here. You want to understand how the system works. So what you do if a bottom up approach? If a bottom up approach, you try to understand how the elements work. So that's a bottom up approach. You start from from the bottom, from the from a uh, from the bottom and go and go up. From a, a perspective of a top-down approach, you try to understand it from the from from, uh, from, uh, from up, such as you make a kind of experiment here, such as heat, but you are not so worried about what's going on, the, the connectivity between the, the elements. For you, it's important the, the output. So you have the experiment, you have the output, that's called top-down approach. So most of the top-down approach are black box. Most of them are black box. They, they are more than which in which you do not understand well. There will be even a gray box, so you have a partial stand of set to go or exactly what's going on inside. So that's the, the two concepts that uh, in mathematical models are very important, but they are not necessarily uh, they are not the same. They can be the same, they can have the intersection at some point, but in some situations they are different. So when I tell you that a model is bottom up, does that mean that it's a white box? Uh, sorry, it's a bottom up. It's a white box, but it's a white box doesn't mean that that's a, a bottom up. So the concept of bottom up and white box and gray box and top down they are all connected to the to the to the how much you know because uh, let's say mathematical model should model should model reality. So people start to see that they, they have they have a certain level of success. Sometimes they success very well, sometimes they don't. So they create several way of modeling that they can be re reorganized. So that's why you have this different classification. Some people do it very well. Uh, it's not depends just as well from the people. For example, if you try to model the brain, the brain function, it's quite possible that you have to apply black box model because the way that the brain works very well, we don't know. So we are going to apply models that is able to replicate some behavior, to predict some behavior, but is not able to, to tell you exactly what's going on. So that is the 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 fourth black box model in general uh, is applied when you 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 cannot understand exactly what's going on. And unfortunately, in biology, most of the time you are kissing uh, the to what's called black mo black box model. In the best case, a gray model. So the white box in biology is more difficult because we we uh, we do not have a good understanding of the of the of biology as you have for physics. So that's a big problem that you have in the in the, in the literature.